नमस्कार माय डियर फ्रेंड्स दिस इज वीडियो नंबर ट्वेल्व ऑन ब्रह्मा एंड हिज वेरियस एस्पेक्ट्स दिस वीडियो नंबर ट्वेल्व स्टार्ट्स विद प्राणा a variety of meaning is attached to prana for instance breath life and the sense organs primarily prana means that vital force in a living being which is incessantly active in waking and sleep in sleep the organs of sense enter into the mind and the fires of the prana keep watch as it were in the city of the body according to its different functions the prana is given five names prana apana vyana udana and samana now the air which rises upward is prana that which moves downward is apana vyana sweeps like a flame through all the limbs it is what sustains life when for instance in drawing a stiff bow a man neither breathes in nor breathes out udana conducts the soul from the body at death by virtue of samana food is assimilated according to the later vedantists the five organs of action the five organs of perception the five pranas the manas and the buddhi constitute the subtle body is dissolved at death the subtle body departs with the organs the relation between the subtle body and the gross body is like that between seed and plant according to some with the vedantist another entity called the shelter of karma karma asraya which determines the character of the new body and life accompanies the subtle body this entity is formed of impressions created by the actions performed in the course of life as it the jiva does and acts so it becomes by doing good it becomes good and by doing evil it becomes evil it becomes virtuous through good acts and vicious through evil acts the gross physical body vedantist analyze the material body into five koshas or sheets namely the gross physical sheet annamaya kosha the sheet of the prana pranamaya kosha the sheet of the mind manomaya kosha the sheet of the buddhi or intellect vigyanamaya kosha and the sheet of bliss anandamaya kosha they are called sheets because they conceal atma as a sheet conceals a sword they are described as being one inside another the physical sheet being the outermost and the sheet of bliss the innermost 
each succeeding sheath is finer than the preceding one as a fine substance permeates a gross one so the finer sheath permeates the grosser sheath atma is detached from the sheath its light and consciousness permeates them all though in varying degrees according to their density by cultivating detachment towards the sheath one by one and gradually penetrating deeper a man realizes atma as pure consciousness the body is often described as the city of brahma the gates of the body are sometimes described as 11 and sometimes as 9 the nine gates consist of the eyes the ears the nostrils the mouth and the organs of evacuation and generation two additional gates are the navel and the aperture at the top of the head brahm randra without the soul the body is absolutely valueless a mere corpse this this ill smelling unsubstantial body a mere mass of bones skin sinews marrow flesh seed blood mucus tears eye gum odor urine gall and phlegm what is the use of enjoying pleasures in this body which is assailed by lust hatred greed delusion fear anguish jealousy separation from what is loved union with what is not loved hunger thirst old age death illness grief and other evils the heart has received much attention from the seers of the upanishads it is the resting place of the pranas the senses and the mind it is the abode of brahma that great birthless self which is identified with the intellect and is in the midst of the organs lies in the akasha that is within the heart it is the controller of all the lord of all the ruler of all its physical shape is often compared to a lotus bud the aspirant is asked to meditate on brahma dwelling in the heart the states of the soul the upanishads discuss at great length the three states of soul avastraya avastraya they are the waking state the dream state and dreamless sleep these cover the totality of the soul's experiences in the relative world as we analyze the three states atman's metaphysical nature becomes more and more plainly visible but in its true nature as turiya or the fourth atma is the detached witness of the three states during the state of deep sleep 
the soul enjoys a temporary union with brahma and frees itself from fear and suffering but as turiya its experiences consciously and always the undying bliss of brahma waking atma during the waking state when it is known by the technical name of vishwa or vaishnara experiences the physical world in common with all men it uses the various sense organs as its instruments but there is no real differences between waking and dreaming in both states a false reality is contemplated one's real self remains unknown waking like dreaming is maya as godapada states since it projects for us a manifold universe the perceptions of waking just like those of dreams have their origin solely within man himself and have no other existence except in the mind of him who is awake and further as the reality of the dreamer is discarded on awakening so to the so called reality of waking is discarded when we dream just as a fish swims between the two banks of a river without touching them so atma roams between the states of waking and dreaming from waking it hastens to dreaming and from this again back to the waking state he is untouched by whatever he sees in that state for this infinite being is unattached dreaming the dream world is a private world of the dreamer from the waking stand point of course the soul while dreaming is known by the technical name of tejasa the experiences of a dream are as real as waking experiences so long as the dream last on wake on awaking from a dream a man discovers that his body and senses were inactive and thus concludes that he was dreaming when he dreams he takes away a little of the impressions of this all embracing world the waking state himself put the body aside and creates a dream body in its place revealing his own lustre by his own light and dreams in this state the man himself becomes the light there are no chariots no animals to be yoked to them no roads they no roads there but he creates the chariots animal and roads there are no pleasures joys or delights there but he creates the pleasures joys and delights there are no pools tanks or rivers there but he creates the pools tanks and rivers for he is the creator in the dream world the shining one attaining higher and lower states puts forth innumerable forms he seems to be enjoying himself in the company of women or laughing or even seeing frightful things the subject and the object in the dream and their relationship are all created by atma from the mind stuff and illumined by its own effulgence this is evidence that atma is the inner light of man dreamless sleep the dreamer passes into 
profound sleep in which state atma is known by the technical name of prajna when a man being thus asleep sees no dream whatever he becomes one with prana alone then speech enters therein with all names the eye with all forms the ear with all sounds the mind with all thoughts in deep sleep the soul is united with the consciousness that is brahma prajnana atmana there are no longer any contrasted objects there is no consciousness in the empirical sense there is a union with the eternal knowing subject that is to say with brahma but this union is only apparent and is unlike the true union that fond that follows the knowledge of brahma the sleeper returns to consciousness of the waking world and becomes again his old self in dreamless sleep atma remains covered by the thin layer of the veiling power of maya that's why unlike turiya it is unconscious of the world like two extremes which sometimes meet the state of deep sleep in many respects resembles perfect knowledge it is a state where a man is fearless beyond desires and free from evils like a man in perfect communion with brahma he does not know anything at all of the world within or without in this state a father is no father a mother no mother the worlds are no worlds the vedas no vedas in this state a thief is no thief the killer of a noble brahma is no killer this form of his is untouched by good works and untouched by evil works for he is beyond all the woes of his heart intellect in the state of deep sleep the soul does not really become unconscious the consciousness belonging to atma is not destroyed because this consciousness is immortal it appears therefore that in the relative world the nearest approach to the peace and desirelessness of brahma is the experience of deep sleep turiya atma in its purest form detached from the three states and subsisting alone and by itself is called turiya which is the same as nirguna brahma that turiya is different from the state of deep sleep has been emphasized by godapada prajna the self associated with the deep sleep does not know anything of the soul self or the non self neither truth nor untruth but turiya is ever existent and ever all seeing non cognition of duality is common to both prajna and turiya but prajna is associated with the sleep in which relative experiences remain in seed form there is no sleep in turiya to dream is to cognize reality in a wrong manner even an awakened man under the spell of ignorance acts as if he were dreaming deep sleep is the state in which one does not know at all what reality is when the erroneous knowledge associated with dreaming and deep sleep disappears one realizes turiya when the jiva asleep under the influence of the beginning beginningless maya is awakened it then realizes within itself 
non duality eternal and dreamless turiya is free from the notion of the empirical subject and object it pervades all the phenomena of the relative universe as the desert pervades a mirage it is the unrelated foundation of the three states and is realized by the illumined soul always and in everything once ignorance is dispelled by the vedantic discipline what becomes of a man after death the question regarding a man's hereafter was perhaps raised even at the dawn of human thinking vedic philosophy has dealt with the subject and the conclusion arrived at is very significant the doctrine of karma and the rebirth of the soul has exercised a profound practical influence upon millions of hindus from the most ancient times even now its influence on their daily lives is great all the good and evil that befall a man during one lifetime cannot be explained if we confine our attention to this life alone what does he know of life who only one life knows in the narrow span of a single life we cannot possibly reap the fruit of all that we do it is reasonable to admit the existence of a transmigrating soul in order to substantiate the general belief in moral requital a moral a mortal ripens like corn and like corn he springs up again but the seed is left we are all born with a blueprint of our life as it were mainly prepared by our actions in the previous life our present acts and thoughts are the result of our past and create our future man is the architect of his own fate and the builder of his own future destiny this conviction makes the believer in the doctrine of rebirth responsible for his present suffering and also gives him an incentive for habitual right conduct to build up a happy future as he accept with serenity his present good or ill fortune he can also look forward to the future with joy and grace if present suffering is the result of a past wicked action then in order to avoid suffering in a future existence a thoughtful man should desire to sin no more it is claimed by yogis that through proper spiritual discipline one can learn about one's past lives buddhist thinkers also share this view but what happens after death is to the rational mind a mere matter of conjecture the experiences of the hereafter cannot be demonstrated in public time space and other conditions would certainly be different on the two sides of the grave therefore a living man would not understand the accounts of the dead even if they were to return to earth to tell him of their experiences for this reason a scientific mind can only accept a plausible theory regarding after death experiences the theory of total annihilation is not satisfactory it gives only a partial picture of existence this theory is not only inconsistent with the self love we all possess but also with the intuitive and direct experience of the seers regarding the indestructibility of the soul and its freedom from birth and dissolution the rishis of the upanishads were not impressed by the theory of 
eternal retribution in heaven or hell. That theory reveals a total disproportion between cause and effect. Life on earth is short, exposed to error and bristling with temptations. Many of our wrong actions are the result of faulty upbringing and environment to inflict upon the soul eternal punishment for the errors of a few years or even of a whole lifetime is to throw to the winds all senses of proportion. It is also inconsistent with God's love for His created beings. The Hindus have therefore developed the doctrine of rebirth. According to this view, it is the desire for material objects that is responsible for a person's embodiment. Desires, of, desires are of many kinds. Some can be fulfilled in a human body, some, some in a some human body and others in a suprahuman body. When a man has fulfilled every desire through repeated births, without driving abiding satisfaction and finds the relative world to be bound by the law of cause and effect, he longs for communion with Brahma, which alone is untouched by the causal law. In most cases, barring those souls who attain liberation from Brahma Loka, a human body is the best instrument for the attainment of knowledge and freedom for in a God's body or in a subhuman body one experiences only the fruits of one's past action. Neither a god nor an animal reaps the fruits of action. Therefore, they cannot be liberated unless they are born again in a human body. According to the theory of rebirth, a soul is born again and again, high or low, depending on the merit or demerit of his actions, so that in every birth he may acquire a little more understanding and detachment and in the end attain perfect knowledge and freedom. This theory is in conformity with the law of cause and effect which is the very basis of the physical universe. It is also in agreement with the spiritual experiences of the mystics regarding man's ultimate end, which is the attainment of the knowledge of the soul's immortality. Rebirth is the inevitable corollary of the soul's indestructibility and explains the raison d'etre of its embodiment in the relative universe. It must not be forgotten, however, that the doctrine of rebirth belongs to the Apravidya, Apravidya, the lower knowledge and operates in the universe of Maya. The Pravidya or higher knowledge removes the illusion of the manifold world and with it of the individual soul and its birth, death and hereafter. There are many strands of thoughts in the Vedas and the Upanishads concerning the souls hereafter. Vamadeva an illumined seer of the Rig Veda said, I was Manu and the sun, the gods who enjoy a relative immortality are those fortunate souls who as a result of their meritorious actions on earth are elevated to exalted positions after death. Man seeking heavenly felicity often worship the gods. The kingdom of in in inexhaustible light whence 
is derived the radiance of the sun to this kingdom transport me eternal undying where is longing and the consummation of longing where the other side of the sun is seen where is refreshment and satiety there suffer me to dwell immortal where bliss resides and felicity where joy beyond joy dwells where the craving of desire is stilled there suffer me to dwell immortal o fire lead us by the good path for the enjoyment of the fruit of our action you know o god all our deeds the ignorant are sent to a region of the blind darkness but not to hell since each soul is portion of the divine none can ever be utterly destroyed or deprived altogether of his spiritual heritage there are passages in the vedas indicating a retribution which consists in having dealt out to us in the next life the very same good and evil which we have dealt out to others in this each man is born into a world that has been fashioned by himself discerning souls who have realized the transitory nature of life on a earth or in the heavenly worlds want to avoid a renewed death purna mrityu and therefore aspire to brahmaloka the higher heaven from which one does not return to earth the teachings of the katha upanishad begin with a direct question regarding the souls here after there is this doubt about a man when he is dead some say that he exists others that he does not this i should like to know taught by you the teacher the god of death first gives in reply a striking discourse on the souls indestructibility then he states the doctrine of rebirth some jivas enter the womb to be embodied as organic beings and some go into non organic matter according to their work and according to their knowledge the bhagavad gita describes death as one of a series of changes even as the embodied cell passes in this body through these stages of childhood youth and old age so does it pass into another body calm souls are not bewildered by this rebirth is directly referred to in the following verse even as a person cast off worn out clothes and puts on others that are new so the embodied self cast off worn out bodies and enters into others that are new the doctrine of rebirth was considered by yajna valkya to be a profound mystery no fruitful purpose would be served by discussing it in a public assembly of pandits yajna valkya so artha bhaga spoke when the vocal organ or organ of a man who dies is merged in fire the nose in the air the eye in the sun the mind in the moon the ear in the quarter the body in the earth and akasha of the heart in the external akasha they are here on the body in the herbs that on the head in the trees and the blood and semen in water where then is the man yajna valke answered give me your hand dear earth bahaga we shall decide this matter between ourselves we cannot do it in a crowd they went out and talked it over what they mentioned there was work and work they praised there was also work therefore one becomes good through good work and evil through evil work for a more vivid description of rebirth when the soul departs the prana follows when the prana departs all the organs follow then the soul has particular consciousness and goes to the body which is related to that consciousness it is followed by knowledge works and past experience just as a leech spotted on a straw goes to the end of it takes hold of another spot and contracts itself so does the 
itself through this body aside makes it senseless, take hold of another spot and contract itself. Just as a goldsmith takes a little quantity of gold and fashions another a newer and better form, so does the soul throw this body away or make it senseless and make another a newer and better form shoot it to the mains or the celestial minstrels or the gods or Virat or Hirnagarbha or other beings. As it does and acts so, it becomes by doing good, it becomes good and by doing evil, it becomes evil. It becomes virtuous through good acts and vicious through evil acts. Others, however, say the self is identified with the desire alone. What is what it desires, it resolves what is it, it resolves, it works out what it works out, it attains. The Brahadarnakaya openness describe the doctrine of the five fires in connection with the rebirth. This doctrine, which was a secret with the Akshatriyas, was taught by Pravahana, the king of the Panchalas, to the Brahmin Aruni, as we have seen. According to this teaching, as the body is cremated, the soul ascends heaven what through the flame and smoke and goes to the plane of the moon, whence it falls to earth in the form of rain. With the rain it is absorbed by plants that bear cereal, with the food it is eaten by man and is transformed into semen, and entering a woman's womb is is born as a human being. Thus people are born again and again on earth and lead their merry-go-round existence. But those wretched souls who do not follow either of the two ways, the way of the gods, Deviana, or the way of the fathers, Pitriyana, become insects, moths, or biting creatures like gnats and mosquitoes. So I end this video here. Please like, comment and share the video. Subscribe the channel. Thanks a lot. Namaskar my dear friend. Next video in this series will start with liberation moksha. Thank you. Namaste.